to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by the one and only, the human turret, the world champ himself, one of the best ARs getting attacked by a dog right now. Give it up for Sam LaRue, a.k.a. Octane. We got some of the best analysis in the game, world champ himself, Christopher Duarte. We got the multi-world champion, the multi-champion, a legend, an icon to the Call of Duty space. Give it up for Patrick Price, a.k.a. Aixen. And, of course, we got the one and only, the executive producer at a flank. Give it up for Benji. Yeah. I'm trying to time this. You're muted in Discord. I don't know how delayed this is. Oh, You're super Christ. muted in Discord. Sorry, Sam. I'm here. There I'm sorry. How you, you doing? Go. What's up, Sam? I was trying to time that up. Yeah, that's on me. That's on me. I didn't realize I was muted oh, in here. What's up, Sam? How you doing, bro? I'm doing great. You guys look fantastic. I uh, wish I was a member of that casting couch. But uh, you look good over alas. there, too, Sam. You look good. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure. Pat, how you doing, Pat? You doing all right? Pat's gone. He's not here. He's not even here. We started the show without even Pat here. He'll come back eventually. He'll come <laughs> back. Duarte, how you doing, bro? You doing good? Yeah, I'm great. I'm excited to be in uh, Miami. Uh, the CDL majors start off today with some good matches, some close games. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I've been going out a lot, so... Pretty, I'm, I'm enjoying my time here. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's nice here. I mean, there's obviously you know some shootings and shit, but no. you know that we don't crazy. talk about that. Yeah, it was crazy. It, I mean, there's just I mean, it was kind of kind of crazy just walking around the area. I mean, it's definitely a pretty sketchy area. So I mean, be safe if if you're obviously at the event and and you're walking around. Uh, you know, stay safe. But Ben, how you doing? You doing all right? I'm doing good. Did coffee and cod this morning. We have to finish some of the setup. Did my bracket? I think my bracket's already busted. Um, and yeah, so that's tough. Some interesting matches today. I mean, we all thought, you know, top four would get through. At least one team had some interesting bumps. And I think for the top four teams, this is the 36 to 48 hours you get with Friday off to figure stuff out. Um, and we're going to get some top four square ups. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm excited for that. Yeah, no, I'm excited for Obviously, today was day one of major two. So it was uh, a lot of energy here. I know uh, the crowd was a little dead today. I feel like, I feel like Thursdays and Fridays, it's always a little dead with the, with the crowd. Yeah, because yeah. you're working and shit. So yeah. it usually picks it's, up on Saturday. It's harder. But uh, the venue looked good, and, uh, and it was just nice to be back at back at an event and just see the atmosphere and, and see the stage. And obviously, we're back on land. So uh, just really excited. Is Pat back? I think I just heard. Nah, he might, yeah, he yeah, might yeah. Have, yeah. Oh, I'm here. here. What's up, Pat? Yeah. How you doing, brother? It's good, Tom. I, I got to switch my mics, but I'm here. No, you're I good, bro. I still have my headset mic on. Yo, no, Pat, you... can you talk real quick? Or Sam, can you talk real quick? Hello, Ben J, 4 and 23, Luigi. Come on, Sam. What the fuck? 18. I just want to make sure you were, Wait, you were too loud question. before. Wait, question. Do I, do I sound normal here? Because I know you guys normally say I yeah, sound you, quiet. Yeah, you sound fine if you want to keep that mic. I think you're fine. Can we just keep it? Yeah, right. you, I think yeah, you're fine. fine I think you're okay. Uh, guys, we wouldn't be here without Xfinity, so I just want to take a second to shout out Xfinity. If you guys want some of the fastest, most reliable internet, make sure to go check out Xfinity. Um, you know, I obviously can't thank them enough with all the support that they've shown to the, to the flank. Uh, it supported all of us, and, you know, we wouldn't be right here on this couch doing what we're doing right now if it wasn't for Xfinity. And, you know, being us, being gamers, man, you need you need the best internet, guys. So, so go check out Xfinity. Uh, they're doing incredible work. So huge shout-out to them. Uh, they've been great to work with, so let's get a, uh, get some W's in the chat for Xfinity. But, guys, how'd you guys think about, uh, about day one for the event? I mean, what did you guys think? I already get my thoughts if Chris wants to go. What did you think, Chris? Um, uh, it was a good day. I mean, uh, Legion pull up, put up a fight against Ultra. Granted, the uh, overall scoreline didn't really show it. Mm -hmm. um, they could have easily taken the series. And then on top of that, we got a banger last match between the Thieves and the Face Boys. And then, obviously, I know the Green Wall. Super yeah. happy with Optic's performance because they looked really dominant today. Yeah, no, they 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 played well. Thought the green wall looked really good. Uh, Sam, I know uh, that last series we had like kind of like a phase LA Thieves <laughs> little watch party going on, uh, and it, we were kind of going back and forth with the shit talk. But what did you think about day one here at the major? Uh, all the predictions went according to plan, but how the series actually played out were a little surprising. Um, yeah. Mainly the phase one. I thought the rest of the series were pretty cut and dry, but. Yeah, I did not expect the phase three to be uh, as close as it was. And we had the whole leadership. We had Nade, Kason, Temper was in there. Honor we had everybody. Versus, honor fucking violence in the call. Yeah, no, nah, really. We had phase Temper. We had Nade shot. I mean, it was uh, yeah, it was, it was good. a good time. It was a very good time. Pat, you, uh, I know you've been working a little bit. You said you were watching some of the games. What did you think about day one? Uh, I mean, as expected, Tom, as expected for me. Um, I know people got a little nervous in that phase series, but I never had a doubt personally. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but to me, if you want me to be honest, I don't even think the tournament started yet. Yeah, so I'm just I mean, gonna be rude it's, you guys. today is just a formality. We got to get through. Yeah, that's I mean, why today... I was saying start these guys in losers. I know, <laughs> get the you buys know going. one less day, but. Yeah, well, obviously, talk about it. Let's hop into the first series of the day. First series, we got the Las Vegas Legion going up against Toronto Ultra. Toronto Ultra end up getting the 3-0 over the Vegas Legion. We'll scroll down and take a look at the stat sheet. But I will say, I'll start things off. I, I don't think the 3-0 on the stat sheet really tells the whole story with today's series with Vegas and Toronto Ultra. I mean, I thought Vegas came out today. Uh, it looked great. I mean, they were coming out, and they were really testing Toronto to their limits, especially in the first map. I thought Vegas kind of threw that away. Um, obviously, that was the Rio, and, and Vegas went up so much, and then yeah. they kind of just let up at the end. But, Ben, I'll, I'll let you kick it off. I mean, what, what did you think about the Vegas-Toronto series? Uh, I don't think Purge had a great individual game. I'm sure we'll get to that in a bit. And to your point, yeah, the Rio was closed. Uh, we'll talk about whatever the F happened in that round 11 invasion, and then sort of a gritty game five invasion led to the 3 0. So it's one of those, like, Close three O's that I don't think Vegas played their best COD today. If he did, it would have been a banger. But uh, for Toronto, some good VOD to watch back, things to work on over the next 36 hours before your next matchup. Yeah, for sure. Chris, what did you think about the series? Um, pretty much what Ben said. But I will argue that, like, you could say that they didn't play their best game. But I think, like, when it comes down to them playing against a top four team and a slate heavy team like Toronto, this is probably as close as they're going to get with their current team and just how they match up. Because, I mean, like, Purge has improved a lot. And there's no doubt in that. Um, but a lot of their matches at home, when he was showing those improvements, were against the lower half of the league. Um, but whenever you're playing against the top four, like, he's just – he's outclassed. Like, yeah. it's it's, play, it's, playing, it's playing simple. Um, I will, like, tip their teamwork because with Purge essentially – um, not really shooting back in the series. Um, he's still, or they were still managing to keep these games close. I think Attach also um, didn't play as good as he normally does against some of the other teams, but Geo and Nero really stepped up. And although Nero did have a really great series and, and Geo played well, Nero did something that uh, we're going to talk about yeah, soon because that he was made a mistake. crazy. He made a big, mistake a big, today. A big mistake. Um, I got that pulled up. We'll pull it up in just a second. But Sam, what did you think about the series? Uh, I loved the performance out of Nero because he was like kind of trending a little bit downwards in the online qualifiers, but he came out today, obviously had a pretty horrific play in the round 11 game too um, that we'll get to, but uh, I like the series out of him. Geo showed up his, his first line event with these guys and has a fucking phenomenal series. A um, yeah. little disappointed out of, uh, out of Dill. I know we've been kind of touting how well he's been playing. So um, to see him underperform here a little bit was uh, a little disappointing. And then, yeah, Purge just kind of regressed to the mean a little bit uh, in terms of, of where he's been at. Uh, mm. But this was a scrap masterclass through and through. This guy literally willed them to victory all three games. Yeah, it's, yeah I mean, Scrap, is he's been unreal for Toronto. I mean, he's been crazy. He's been unbelievable. He, yeah, I mean, he, and it, it, I think just it's a consistency with him, too, is what's mm -hmm. really, like, impressive. It's just every single series. He's, he's just been dropping the best numbers. player in the league since he literally got into the league yeah nah, he, you he can really argue has. maybe like sell in terms of like consistency factor mm -hmm. but like scrap, but scrap is, is different he scrap plays is he, fucking insane he plays at like a really fast pace with an ar and, and he, he puts on a lot of damage yeah he flexes, he flexes a lot so as that's well. like that's typical mm -hmm. i mean a lot of people be like dude like you're we're always glazing scrap and stuff like that and it's not like he's our friend or like he is our friend but at the same time like you just can't doubt like how well this guy plays. Yeah, it's just just saying it how it is. But yeah, Pat, what did you think about the series? Vegas Legion they lose three zero, but first map probably should have went Vegas's way, and then second map I think there was a big mistake there from from Nero. I mean, definitely think uh, Vegas played Toronto well, but ultimately I think this is what we all predicted. What did you think, Pat? Yeah, um, I I know we we're gonna say Nero played well, and he did. But I feel like that's just what you kind of expect from a player like Nero. And I don't mean this with any disrespect, but like, the play or the play, like yeah, that. just like making bonehead plays in the clutch. Like there, there's some players that just they play at a pace where obviously they're going to get kills, but they make plays that clearly cost you. Like the, I, I think the best way I think about it is, is situations where like you don't got to do anything special. Let the game come to you. But there's players, him, Vivid, there's a lot of players like that that play that way. Um, and I think that was super costly to extending this series because it was close. But I was let down by Attach. I don't know about you guys. Um, you know, he for me, he was the best player in Stage 2 in the online qualifiers. And I think this was like one series that he couldn't afford to have a bad series in almost. Um, 
And then on the side of Purge, I mean, I, I, I tried to say this before the event, and I still feel this way I currently. I think I'll still feel this way after this event. This team has um, a chance to be good. And I just don't think Perge on the team can can do that. So yeah, I think we said it when we were opinion. doing predictions. We were basically saying that in order for LA or LA Vegas to beat Toronto, they all had to be on their A game. And two of their players, like majorly, showed up, and the other two kind of didn't have their best series. Even if, if Perge had maybe like a one obviously like stats don't tell the whole story. But if he was able to even go relatively close to even, and maybe attach even did the same, they probably beat these yeah. guys. I mean, Dylan did have the second most damage on a team. I think yeah. he was having a hard time yeah, just I mean, finishing I'm, kills. He, 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 he was contributing, obviously. Um, Purge just wasn't Pur- was Purge is definitely so. Purge is definitely just I don't know, man. I, I just they must see something else in him other than what he's dropping on the scoreboard. Because let's be honest, what he's been dropping on the scoreboard just hasn't been good. He just runs into trouble against like the slay heavy teams, especially in the top four like he's just not he's just not on the tier of the players that he's playing against i'll say i'll say this because i grew up i think the next day or two potentially is gonna be really big for what they want to do after this major but i mean to be fair to vegas i don't think any of us had to pick to win this series and i think the real tournament for them starts obviously uh tomorrow in the losers bracket run but it's a better performance we'll get to that later pat we'll get to that later yeah we'll get there um uh, I let's, don't even know. We have to, let's have to tune in. Uh, this is the play, actually, from Nero. So it's a round 11 here in the map, too. And Nero makes a great play. I love the off angle here. He gets a kill. He's able to stay alive. He drops the nade, gets another one one shot. But it's the play lay after prone. he makes. Just lay prone right here. Just lay prone. Yeah, just lay nothing. prone. Just make them overextend because he ends up sliding out. He had the bomb, too, right? Like, he, he's got a good bomb, uh, a line of sight there onto the bomb. So they can't really do anything. And then. Kind of just forces everybody else to just kind of overextend now. Now Vegas is kind of screwed here, and uh, there's really not much that they can do. Definitely uh, a misplay there. You just from, forced from it to Mira. be mixy because, like, Dill had to follow it up, and then the other teammate followed it up. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, and I've seen this. I mean, I'm sure you guys, like, again, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but, like, I'm sure Nero watching this back is like, wow, that was a bonehead move. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you he'll still make plays like that in the future. And it's just... I think it just comes down to certain players, whether they have it or don't have it, where in the moment they they, they you know they, they don't have the capability to decide, you know, the the do nothing strat. Like just the ability to say, like, I don't gotta do anything in this moment. Um and so for me, I mean, I, I think that you just live and die by this. Like you know what you you're gonna get out of Nero. He's obviously he can get kills, he's a solid player, but I, I expect this to happen all year long, in my opinion. Yeah. That's just the tier. That's just the tier of SMGs, right? Like the best SMGs in the game have kind of mastered that, like go button, and then on top of that, just understanding when to play their lives. And yeah. the tier below them, like you're either going to get the people that are really like campy, not campy, but like flank heavy, and then you're going to get the people that are just really aggressive, but they don't know when to stop flanking, or they don't know when to stop being aggressive and just let the game come to them or adjust their. And play he style. made the he made the play to win in the round. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he did. Was 11 I, I, and seven, I mean, he, he was 11 and 8. Yeah. I mean, he ended the map 11 and 8. I mean, this is this was a scoreboard here. I'll switch on over so you guys can take a look. But this this was a scoreboard here after the map number two. And, and listen, Nero's a great player. Like, he's a good player. He's very talented, especially mechanically. Like, you could tell he's a, he's a very talented player. It's just decision making is like. When it comes to winning events and when it comes to, to land, like you just got to make sure that you're just playing fundamentally sound. And those mistakes are what's going to kill you, especially against a team like Toronto Ultra, because they'll take advantage of that every day of the week. Um, and I even think Scrappy was here uh, on the watch party. He was saying the same thing. He said, yeah, we laughed when he slid out. We, we knew we had it. We, we knew he fucked up. And, and, Pat, I agree. I think Nero knows in the moment that he fucked up. Like, he's a smart guy. He's a good player. As soon as he slid out that door. Oh, he yeah. Knew. Like, oh, he knew. But, um, he, but he doesn't have, the like, the capability to not do it in the moment. Like, I think we've seen it. We'll continue to see it. And I think that's what separates the top, the real top SMGs from everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I think you don't think he can ever adapt, Pat, and, and like learn. I, I mean, I've seen players like this for 15 years, Tom, and I feel like they, you know, it's one of those things where like they can, you can teach it, they can, they can listen to it, they can see it, they can understand it, but in the heat of the moment, it just doesn't click. It it doesn't happen until after the fact where they're like, wow, that was really dumb, right. and they know it was dumb. It's not like they don't. It's just I, I've seen it a lot where it's like those players that are very fast paced, very one geared. 
they 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 can't it's make that call that, in in the moment that it's very it rare that that will like get fixed in like the near future. It's one of those things that comes with like multiple years of like experience. Well, I think to, I, I, I to, think Hoops it, on that same level. Look Tyler, at Hoop last year in that Tyler optic play. The absolutely. Well, like, the Nero to Nero in specific, he's like, the extreme. Didn't though, we honestly. have with with him and Reese? Like, didn't we have this criticism a lot on them last year in 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 uh Montford to remember how many like game fives they tossed away by like Domingo Charles and Search's bad communication. I agree with you, Pat. Like, he's got to figure out, add a little bit of discipline. He did enough in that round to basically close out, and then he made one more extra decision that cost them. So, mm-hmm. it's just real tough to see. What, what were you going to say, Sam? You were, it sounded like you were about to say something. I was just, I was just agreeing with Pat on the uh, the Kyler point. I think Kyler is just like the very end of that, of, of like Pat's point. That of is the extreme. Decision. Yeah, he's the, the far <laughs> outlier of it for sure. Yeah. And, and um, he's super talented. It's just. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, I agree, though. Um, it's just like a gear switching thing that you see with the top subs. And I like, while you kind of have to roll with the punches that play or with players that play like that, that way, um, Nero, Kyler, vivid, like these just fast paced, um, they're going to win you games, but they're also going to lose you games. But the thing about the play round 11, like I know in the moment, as soon as he died, he was like, Oh fuck. But the thing about him sliding out of that door is attach also Charles because he is probably just like, ah, fuck it, bro. Like, if we're going to do something, we're going to do it together as a team because that's just, even if it's a bad play, if you do it together, it's, chances are it'll work. So, like, that, him sliding out of that door is just a chain reaction of fuckery in the round 11. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. everybody, right? Like, a task yeah. dropped, someone else chowed right after because it was just yeah. a panic moment. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, Jet think Gio was the last one up, and he was kind of out of the play. He was, like, watching flank and shit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, tough, tough round there. Um, I'm sure Vegas is going to watch that one back and, you know, they're, they're not going to be happy looking at that. But let's move on to the control. Then we get into the control. This was the 2-2 round. And uh, honestly, I just thought that Vegas needs to be more proactive here. So three go dead here. All right, three guys. Uh, and you see number four, he starts to inch up to this point now. So he gets on the point. Boom. I think right here, number three needs to get to the street and help this guy on hill and pick up his cross, maybe even put some shots down into the guy crossing. And then number two, I think, needs to chill out. It's Nero, again, who who I think is just going a little rogue here. Like, right here, I, I want him to just chill and, like, L-trigger this cross here and make them run by him. But instead, he slides out. He ends up getting picked. He ends up dying. Uh, and then the whole entire setup just kind of crumbles here. And that was a moment right there where I was like, man, that was the opportunity for Vegas to get on that point and make something happen. I mean... Do you think that was an opportunity there for Vegas I mean, as well? And uh, we, do, do you we, like the way they played that we situation? We talk about this all the time, Tom. That Mannequin's guy is so important to watch across the hill, especially if it's a Nixie kind of rush situation. They're coming off that gas spawn. Like, the guy in hill can shimmy and give you info on where to, where to uh, peek. It seemed like, yeah, he wanted to make a pinch play because he thought there was going to be more kills that gone down. But I agree. All Nero had to do is kind of watch across. And listen, maybe they lose the gunfights and they lose it, but that would have been, like, I think the correct play in the situation. Do you agree, Sam? Uh, I think him playing his life in mannequin for his gas cross, whoever was on point, was the most important thing. But whoever came off spawn and went mid-court, I think also made the yeah. wrong choice here because the guy on point had to worry about both sides at this point. Um, so I think who attached, if he had gone street to cut their side of the point as opposed to running up court giving seven this timing now, I think who purges on point has to turn because his cross is open on the backside. I think it's just like a cascade of errors. I think Nero could have played the situation um better but i think dill also kind of messed up here by not getting the closest angle for purge on point i feel like he just he's just looking back and forth he doesn't know what's going on yeah i feel i feel like once you have somebody on the point like the the one thing you want to do is just try and help them. Like if your teammates on the point, like get in, the point. yeah, get into a, get into a position where you can help them because you you can help yeah. them from a lot of different areas on a map. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as you have an angle like if, and if, you put some if shots. If Dill down. had gone a street here, one he wouldn't be able to die to seven without overextending into that gunfight, so he would have had guaranteed info on him. And Purge could only angle their side, assuming Nero plays the situation properly and helps the gas cross. Yeah, that is the best case scenario because seven would have to overextend to either kill Dill or kill Purge on the point. Seven also made the play rather than like tweaking out and like worrying about yeah. the. Point. He just played for the spawners, and he catches like Dylan slipping, so he yeah, makes yeah. a really heads up play. Hundred percent. I mean, it, it sometimes it's not even about playing for the kills, right? Like if, if Dylan Street, it's 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 just about putting bullets into people, tagging them up. That way, it just it keeps purge alive. Like if anybody pushes purge on point, they're gonna be weak. They're gonna be one shot. He's gonna pick up free exactly. kills, um, and it'll make everybody's job easier. I mean, Paco did a great job with it in the New York series. He just gets on a point by himself. They kind of just help around him, and uh, they were able to work a four dead and. Stack the point, and uh, that's all she wrote. But uh, huh. that was the control there. Toronto, they end up 3-0-ing the Vegas Legion. I mean, guys, any final thoughts on a Vegas-Toronto series? 
That was a, those were some very winnable maps. Um, Agreed. I don't want to attribute map one to a throw on the side of Vegas because I think Toronto just really outplayed the second rotation. Uh, map two was absolutely a toss up, and this this year yep. should have at least gone to a game four. Um, so they did get three would but there's some shining moments here for Vegas, and I think that this was an expected result for them, regardless of how the maps actually yep. went. Um, so I think they're a real tournament does start tomorrow um and i think we all have them probably advancing at least a little bit into losers bracket so they need to take the good moments from today forget they lost and uh see what we can do in the, so they're on yeah, the top the side of losers bracket and they're gonna play see obviously we'll do predictions later but they're gonna play seattle and the teams on their side is miami and carolina so <laughs> yeah they got nothing to worry that's about what i said yeah, I so there, there's there's opportunities for vegas to get top six and beyond i i have i don't know about you guys i'm assuming everyone in here did a bracket but i have vegas up until they play a top four team again and that's yeah, why I have them yeah. Losing. we did the same yeah yeah. All right, let's move on to the next series of the day. We have the New York Subliners going up against the Boston Breach. NYSL get the 3-1 victory over Boston. It was actually Boston who come out and dominate the first map. I mean, I think the way that Boston came out the first map, I was like, holy shit, they might actually do this. It was this. the ASIM show. Uh, it was the ASIM show. ASIM uh, came out and shut it down on, in the map one. Map one. Uh, and then after that, it was just not looking good uh, for the Boston Breach. I mean, we'll scroll down. Little jump scare. Oh, shit. Not looking good here, honestly, for... Fucking anybody. I mean, I definitely think for New York, it seems a little bit more balanced. <laughs> Ace um, and Hydra will 1v1ing, bro. Why can't people on <laughs> yeah. Boston get kills, Tom? I don't know. I really don't know why they have a hard time getting... Actually, I, I can tell you why. I they don't, they don't play good. They don't have different gears, but we've talked about these gears, Pat. We've talked about this. When oh, they get gears. kills and they get three or four dead, they just go. Like, they just don't stop. They just sprint, 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 die, 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 and then it's like nothing comes from it, right? Like, they do a good job getting the kills initially, but they don't do a good job... Making the right decisions when after they can that. really punish. After right when you can punish. I, yeah. I, there was one play on Skid Row, and, and granted, the, the Boston won like crazy, but it's just an example of like one hill. But it was like I think it was a P3. Everybody died. Boston killed all four of them. They got New York spawning back P2. And Snoopy just jumps off a plat, runs into garage, sprints through garage, and then dies. There was and another point in that match, too. Like, it was whenever the Boston called in their streak, breaking P5. Mm -hmm. They got, like, all that space. They didn't even get into the objective. And they just, like, ego child, like, all the, like, re like repeak angles from New York and just died. I was just yeah. like, wait, this is your time to literally farm them. They're all trapped in garage. They're about to come out, and you just get free kills. Yeah, nope. I mean, listen, a lot of these teams have the same problems, bro. Like, the, the, like outside of the top four, the, the rest of the teams, they have the same issues. They all have the same problems. Like, their decision-making after doing the hard part is what's messing with them. It's, it's fucking them up, and, and you see it clear as day, and, and good teams will punish you for it uh, all day to week. But, I mean, Pat, we'll go to you. What did you think about the series? New York, they come out, they get the dub, 3-1 over uh, Boston. What did you think? Uh, I mean, I was worried for all of 10 minutes, Tom, and then after that, my worries went away. Um, <laughs> I, Boston had ASIM doing the ASIM clap, and, and, and they couldn't turn it into anything. Um, I, I, I fear for this Boston squad. Um, obviously got pooped on after map one, but yeah. I, I'm just worried about them long term. Like map map I, two, map two was pretty close though. Now, yeah, nah, well, it, I mean, it was. Map it was. two was good. Boston Dude, was map playing. Was close, Boston was playing really good, really good defenses, and slash they got was one playing v three, really well, and then they got one v three. They got which I pulled up. I have a clip. I, I mean, I, I want to pull it up. Uh, I mean, I Asim think, can't be the best player on his team. Yeah, period. I I think period. they have a couple of issues. One is obviously the, the Preston Austin the slang is always going to be inconsistent, and they're not there. And listen, Snoop is so far from being the kind of player they need on the team, like decision making communication I and mean, we've talked about it a lot over the last couple of weeks with them like that's just the reality of their team i think their like floor ceiling is just so far apart and and results like this are going to happen and they, it, it is what it is on the they do, this team this this team also just doesn't stand a chance against like they're i, I said this before the, the watch party i said they are not going to be able to win this series because they don't have a leg up against yeah. new york i think relatively with the way that new york has been playing and and uh, how like they're not like a slate. I don't think they're a slate heavy team. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna say that again. They're not a slate heavy team when it comes to their entire roster. They they are a teamwork heavy team and a search and destroy specialist team. That is what New York strives at right now. And Boston, like they just don't have a leg up in S and D. So when it comes down to respawns, like sure they might take one here or there, right? They can split them 50-50, but it's gonna come down to that search, and they're just not good enough at that game mode to beat 
New York at it. And that's yeah. literally the, that's the main difference maker in this series. Because even though they had a close game, if they would have won that, hypothetically, they push a game five, right? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, agreed. Anybody got any thoughts before we take a look at some of these clips? Um, obviously, from the series, uh, I mean, one of them was the was the one v three. I mean, this was a big round. I mean, it's a two two round. Uh, it's the fifth round of the, of the second uh, map, and we'll kind of see how it all plays out. So you can see Kismet. It starts. Uh, it's Kismet who gets the one v three here. You can see uh, Hydra. He tried to make a play because they were down a man, but the Bulldog. He's able to find one. He gets tagged up. I don't know how he won the second gunfight. He was one Bro, shot. He was nine HP and Snoopy didn't have a fucking. He was nine tough. HP, and I don't know if Snoopy panicked and just missed every shot. Well, was I really Snoopy don't know. Was Snoopy weak when he was like staying down? Uh, I don't believe he was weak. No, he, he never nah, was. He, was he weak. wasn't weak. No, he never was. Like, yeah, I don't know what he was. Personally, doing. looked like he was licking a wall. I'm not gonna lie. He was, but per like personally, the first cut you should get for your teammate if he's pushing up towards like to help you escalators is going to be the escalators. Otherwise, stuff like this is gonna Great happen. Comms, Chris. So I'm not really sure why he was looking hallway or licking a wall or whatever. But he I wasn't mean, even looking hallway, bro. He's literally staring at a corner. Yeah, like, he, he was. He was um, paranoid it, that he would have died from like top yeah, third or something. And, and, but. and if you're P-Dog, you're probably like, how did I just die from Esky? Right? But like that's the thing, it, though. It's like you're in a 3v1. You're the front man. Your job is to play information. Your your life is completely irrelevant. Like, you staying down is, like, not important. You should be, like, up there, shimming, getting information, trying to spot this player. And even if you die, at least your teammate knows where he's coming from. It, it, the people like to make this miss, uh, this terminology. It's called getting front baited. It's where the yeah, teammate yeah. in front of you baits yeah. the fuck out of you. Yeah. That's essentially what happened. I guess he I, he did it in, unintentionally, but unintentionally. Like, yeah, bro, but. you were the first guy in line. Your job is information and information only. I don't care if you fucking die. Yeah. And he just played it completely wrong, and it cost him it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely uh, a round that I that I thought New York uh, or sorry Boston had in the bag, and then this was the offense. This was the. First offense of the map that was won, which was which was big because it was going back and forth, just back and forth all game. A lot of defensive wins, and uh, this was the offense that that gave New York that that little bump there. And it starts with Dante doing his dumbass slide to the pole. <laughs> you know, I don't know why Dante does this slide to the pole. He gets blooded all the time doing his. He tries to slide to that pole, and so I don't know most why of the time, he's doing. what he does is he shimmies the escalators, and he assumes that if nobody's playing the escalators, he can shimmy to or he can slide to the pole. To draw fire from the guy top red or get information right, on him. Hold, hold but on the back. problem is Go he ahead. doesn't ever account for a guy playing close, so he just dies if a guy's there every so, time. So back up real quick to after after they get this kill. So Preston sees number four slide books, and what does what does Austin do after? Does he not actually see this guy at all? Preston saw Preston oh, didn't see fucking anything. Oh, he got crazy, bro. Taco got insane timing. I actually didn't didn't even notice this. Yeah, well, he sees the guy run away at AC. That's what happened. Like, the guy... That's, right, that's, why, that's why Preston turns, because he thinks... And then, well, yeah, Paco actually yeah, gets Paco incredible typing, because well, otherwise... That, and and I, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if that's, like, bad timing. I think it's just Paco finding a gap and, and just being a good player. Well, like, Paco, having good game Paco, sense. So, Paco... As soon as Asim shoots, he, like he thinks, okay, I'm probably gonna have a one v one. And he saw, he also saw Slasher run he away. He saw Slasher yeah. so turn he probably his back thinks, on, the, on the on the lane. Exactly. He probably thinks he has a one v one with the guy close hallway. So he checks it and he's like, wait, no one's here. So he finds right. a gap. Exactly. Right. That's that's just what the good players do. Like if if they see somebody give up a lane or if they see a gap, like they'll hit it and they'll make a play. And that's what Paco does. He didn't hesitate. Sometimes you'll see people hesitate. Like they'll see. There's a gap that they know it's open, but you can see them kind of double guessing themselves, and it ends up fucking him. Paco is decisive. He just goes for it. He makes the play, uh, and he catches Austin with his pants down. Austin's probably sitting there. How the hell is this guy in our fucking AC? Uh, and that pretty much just uh, kicks it off. And now it's a three v three situation. And Boston, they give up plane. Like New York, they they waltz into plane. Like they had the blood. Uh, in New York, they, or Boston, they gave it up. They decided to just let him have it, and uh, and then you can see the setup comes in. I thought it was a ballsy play from the Bulldog jumping out, but he heard the click. He heard the grenade click he heard and the instantly click. activated on it. Is. Great play. He hears the click. He knows that he doesn't have his gun up, and uh, and he makes a play on that. And then Paco, he tucks himself in a, in a little weird off angle here. Like, nobody's going to check fucking under here. Uh, good little spot here, and uh, he was able to find uh, the kills go down. It was a 1v1 situation, but because New York had the numbers, the trades go in their favor. They win the first offense of the map. That ultimately leads to them winning the second map. It was uh, good plays from from New York there, um, and it was their first map win on land <laughs> uh, this season, which is uh, crazy coming from the world champs themselves. And then we get into the control. This was the offense that New York was able to win on invasion. 
uh, after this, they won back-to-back -back defenses. You guys know how invasion control goes. But just to kind of show you guys how this all gets set up. I mean, what do you guys think about Boston's setup here? Because you have Slasher who's across the map, which I, like, I don't know how I feel about that, knowing that that B point is gone and it's the only A point that's left. Uh, granted, he does have the cross, so he's probably just trying to put some shots down into people. But you can see how these people on the point get isolated and the trades come in. New York wins the trades. They get onto the point, and you'll just see the difference on how New York Is plays Is there any it. way we can they, go back and see, like, how they initially got into that setup? Because it seems, like, really out of pace how Snoopy was able to get into Cafe, and he's he's by himself, so he gets isolated. Like, go back, like, a little bit further before this. I just want to see how, like... So Snoopy's literally pushed up a search. He runs in because of the streak. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they just got streaked. That's why they're so spread. Yeah. Because um, I was, like, wondering, like, Snoopy's ISO'd. Like, look how spread their setup is. So I was just curious to see how yeah. that actually but happened. I, but I think the key here with this setup is we just watched Vegas, right, and what happened when Purge was on the point and his teammates were coming off spawn. But when you see here with New York, you see this boom, boom, bada, bing, boom, right? Everybody dies. New York comes off spawn, right? Bang, bang. Two guys come up. Now, look, watch what they do off the spawn. They both hit street. Yeah. Boom. They throw their attacks over probably. I mean, I can't see, but they, they probably start hork attacks. They get their cross. They put the shots down, and it's it's clinical. They, they get right back into the play. Do you think um, one thing maybe, my question to you guys, is when Aeson comes off a of spawn, he goes to the side of the hill, do you think? And, and they have no info, so maybe he thinks there's someone in mannequin. He's just kind of playing a corner. Do you think if he goes in the mannequin and he can watch across the hill and watch across that old P1, that that probably would have been. Let me been. see. Wait, what are you talking about? When? Asim? I mean, Asim's just at this point, his teammates, his teammates. No, no, but he gets there early. He gets there pretty early, though. I, I think he has no info, and that's why he plays like this off the streak. But, like, uh, Snoop's in I P1. I mean, yeah, with Snoop, that's a good point, Ben. Yeah. I mean, with, with Snoop being in P1. So they kind of uh, have all the info. Bro, I, I, no, I would almost rather, them, no I, I would almost yeah. rather them double P1. I'm not even lying. Yeah, not P1, not, P1, not P1, P1, sorry. I would almost rather them double the point. Because yeah. Yeah, a lot of the time, if, like, the, people don't expect two people to be on point. So if, like, they don't get that initial info right, they... They get number six weak with the wall bangs and stuff like that. If they slide in, they're crop, they're probably going to be surprised that he there's two the people there. Too. I I just think again, like it's just tough. It's tough for him to be in a position to really like get the the cross kill hundo p. Especially if you think someone's pushed up street. I don't I don't think at the end of the day to your point like the streak and it all played New York City when they got the kills. But I just thought I mean the the streak the streak is the pr the their setup their dog shit setup is literally a Jesus product Christ. of them getting streaked and having to spread, which basically left Snoopy isolated and like. He's the key there. Like, if he gets one, this can potentially be a completely different play. But, I mean, I, and New York did a really good job of, like, calling in the streak and calling out where the players were and then ISOing all the players yeah. that were in solo spots. So, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it wasn't really Boston's fault here. I think it was just great play out of New York. It was. It was a great play from, from them. I, I, li I just like how they get back into the play and they pick up the crosses. And all you need – it's one guy on the point initially. Once you get one guy on the point, you get the other team scattering. They start to panic. They start running around. You start getting free picks, and uh, it just makes everything a lot easier. But um, New York, they get an easy victory. I mean, we don't really need to talk about the sub base too much. I thought it was pretty one-sided. I uh, thought New York kind of just slammed them, uh, and they get the victory here. I mean, Pat, any, any final thoughts here with, with New York and Boston? No, but I am worried about Boston, Tom. Um I'm sure Ben's going to say we'll get there. I'm not 100% who they play, but um, I'm worried about this squad. I, I, I kind of, I'm after what I saw today, I'm predicting they go out sad top 12. Well, they play, Min back. they play Minnesota, so I actually think they got a chance in that one. But they're going to play the I think they go out too. sad. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll say this for <laughs> Lamar. Say, Lamar's already survived a big battle. I, I don't think he's, he's yeah. losing Lamar. I'll say this about Boston. Like, based on the last couple of series, respawn is super up and down. Their control is not that great. The s has gotten better over this split. And you think about a series against Minnesota, like, that could come in really critical. But, like, do I expect them to beat Thieves? After the I think they've showed. Today, I, I think, think they've so. shown improvements, but again, it's kind of like the same thing as Vegas. Like Vegas have shown improvements, but like yeah. when it comes to the top four, they're just outclassed. It's kind of the same thing here with Breach. Like I think you put Breach against any of the other bottom teams, like they have close games regardless. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's gonna do it for Boston, New York. Uh, obviously, New York at their first win on land uh, of the year, so I'm sure they're gonna ride through uh, that momentum and, and try and keep that going. Uh, Boston, they obviously fall. We'll, we'll take a look at the bracket after uh, review the matches, but let's hop in to the next series of the day. This was the third series, uh, and we have Optic Texas going up 
against the Miami Heretics. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think this one was close. Uh, uh, jump, uh, scroll down. Let's see the, let's see the jump scare here. Uh, is there a jump scare here? Good oh, Lord. Jesus. <laughs> oh, this team, man. this team is so bad. They they're are. they're zero and nine on land, by the way. They've yeah. never won a map on land. Oh my God. That's crazy. Uh, they're That's home crazy. major. Yeah. They all are just red carpet phenoms, series after series. Red carpet phenoms is actually the craziest thing, man. I mean, that's, that's what they are. <laughs> like, they just, they the just show carpet. up and get world starred. It doesn't matter who they play. They could play any team, and they just show up and get world starred. I will starred. say they, that they that have first... Been six by Optic. I will say that they that first played. Invasion Hardpoint, uh, halfway through, they were competitive. Yeah. And then uh, there was an... At do you, wait, did you pull up the spawn, Tom? Is the spawn and uh, then yeah, the P three and the absolute insane spawn that happened uh, that ended up like swaying the next hill in favor of Optic, which then Optic basically ended up snowballing into absolutely fucking shitty on them for the rest of the map was crazy. <laughs> this right here, right, Chris? This is what you. This is what you wanted. Right? Yeah, now. it was right. I think it was right. Like right before. Yeah, yeah, it was right before it. So the uh, right before this. Well, it. Cause I see a spawn okay. coming. I see a spawn coming here, right here. Look, here it comes three. Here it comes. Boom. Wow. Number seven. Boom. Right there. But the thing is, though, why the fuck did Miami spawn there in the first place to block that spawn to give seven? Like, go back further, right before my before Miami even spawned there. Let's watch the hill. Let's watch the hill play out. There's about uh, so yeah. yeah. Lucky takes an amazing route here. He gets behind all of their team. He gets this. He ends up dealing with. Uh, he ends up just blocking this for a while, and then they deal with number six. Okay. Boom. Oh. What the hell did you do? Okay. Yeah, so all quality. these spawns now should be Miami. Like, Miami should spawn with them the whole time. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, two. Okay. Keep it going. Yeah. But he spawns behind what them, which the makes fuck? no sense. The power spawn makes no sense. And then they double spawn there. And then Miami spawns Palace. I'm thinking when number four pushed up here, he's, he'd probably be blocking that. But, I mean, he still spawns there. And if, if you're AG, you're like, what the fuck? AG spawn pushed out into a fucking setup. I mean, and, then, and, then, that. and then the next spawn that comes in is from Dashy, and Dashy spawns out Palace. So I, get, just, I get there are, like, assumed justifications that you can make. It's like, oh, I've got hill control for a second. Bro. Or, oh, the is hill is white. But that's not even readable. Basically, the game just, like, the game cheats you from, like, a, a, a hill. Yeah, and the, it's the, happened to many teams. And we've it's said not that too, right? The guys. hill was white, which, yeah, it, the hill's white might me mess with some fuck shit, but I mean, imagine being a player in game, right? The hill goes white for two seconds when people are coming off yeah, spawn. You're like, where the fuck did they just spawn? It's not you even know? like where something that you can avoid. It's like, oh, I killed them on the point. The hill's white while I run to it. Oh, a fuck spawn just happened as yeah. I killed them. Like, And Optic, they locked down so much time but, here. But let, me, yeah. let me say this, Chris. And this is the problem I have with this Miami team is like, they are so momentum based as a fucking team because we watched this example. What was the final score of this map, Tom? They got like the final 20. score of this map was two hundred and fifty to one sixty five. So they got thirty more points after that. And I'll, I'll, I'll got scored them like one hundred and fifty to thirty. They, this is what this Miami team's problem is, bro. They they tilt. They can't get back on level. They can't rotate early and try and get the momentum back. And sometimes they come in a series and they're hot. Sometimes they come in a series and they're but that, stinkers. That's the thing with like they, most they, of the. Yeah, that's, go ahead. That's, I was going to say, that's the thing with most of the teams that are bottom of the top four. They don't have a reset button where yeah. if something is going wrong for them, they don't know how to reset and regain an advantage. So you'll see teams uh, just end up like going on these long sprees of just m missing a rotation here or there and just yeah. getting funneled and broken. Like when you look at the top four teams, they understand when they need to reset, they hard rotate, then they end up holding a 60. And now the game is back in their hands and they're in control of the situation. But these bottom four teams, or not bottom four teams, but the lower half of the league just simply does not have those, those we don't, we don't uh, see this tools Miami in the team. And again, they're put optic today. Like, you know, I'm sure from the optic guys after that first series, they got three over Miami. This has been kind of a personal series for them. With the three O, but like for they Miami, they gotta let the three O thing go, yeah. bro. They're beating the shit out of these guys. I mean, yeah. AG sat yeah. there and ripped the three O for fifteen they gotta seconds. Let it go, but <laughs> I, Yo, he's got to let that go, Sam. Out. He's got to let it go. I think, I think he's for Miami, it go, it's, just, <laughs> it's listen, like they they just got to find a way to to grind these series out. And I just think they get bowled over too much when they lose a first. This map team like is this. just chalked, bro. Like, bro, it, yeah. They uh, why are we trying to solve these? Blow this team up. They still got one more match. I mean, they got at least a lose bracket run here if they can do it. Like that's the thing, bro. It's like don't even show up. Just start networking to, be, to find a better team to tomorrow. To be the, only, yeah. Yeah. the only maps, I'm trying to be solutions oriented. To go the ahead, only Chris. maps that seems like that this Miami team is competitive on Rio. now is Rio and like Optic is a pretty good Rio team. They vetoed it. Yeah. They were like, play us on these other maps. And go they just play had that. zero like up. Love respect that. the vetoes. Respect yeah. that. Those great so fucking good. vetoes. And respect then on top that. of that, you got a a well oiled machine Optic right now, like playing with really good teamwork. 
and they just got obliterated. Yeah. No, I love the – honestly, the only takeaway from this series, obviously they just out-talented Miami and beat the shit out of them, but the vetoes and the picks today from Optic were great. They got a, an Invasion Hardpoint rep, which they play but not super frequently, and they got a Rio S&D rep, which is super big for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then they had, like, literally the most dominant control I think I've watched this year. But yeah. the that picks Rio and the vetoes this insane. season um, – or this series, excuse me, were, like – pretty much the only thing i was concerned Bro, optic with, like, literally beat miami on them. rio search and destroy two versus four yeah that was yeah. crazy yeah it was big for their map pool going forward in the tournament because they're like every sorry ben but everyone that's played here is like you you can show up to an event being like not exactly confident on a map and you could just randomly be godlike at it yeah. on the weekend oh yeah so this could be um a, a weird in there because they don't really have a lot of reps on those two maps yeah i i, I listen this miami team i think i, I see where you're going i mean they're gonna play carolina next like I, who knows with Carolina, but Miami's a team in real trouble, and obviously Rayel, I think his visa situation it seems like is either sorted now or he's getting his you know his passport, uh, following his passport to stamp soon. So I think he'll be in the mix here, and and Miami's just got to figure out. The who team are they dropping, Ben? Because we, I think going into this, we all thought Eric Boom was the, the guy, but now Metals is also the guy, like. You got, this team just sucks. This, they don't this, have any this good is where they two lose, weeks by the way, as got, well, on the got, Karachi. This is where Miami breaks. You got two weeks to figure it out, though. Like, I mean, they, they got some time. I don't know how prideful they are, but they got to drop the entire Spanish like uh, pride here and just pick up better players, period. Like, yeah, they're, they're yeah. not going to do that, bro. I don't yeah. care what they do. I don't know. I mean, if they're not going to do it, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. They're well, not sure, going to qualify for chance. I'm sure Real's coming in. By the way, great play from Dashi and Kenny here. I love the way they work this site. The, the way they, they were able to work this, this B site. Uh, and just kind of slow play with their ARs. And, and honestly, you just see Miami right there. You just see them running into L triggers with, with Kenny and Dashi. They're just running at them. Uh, and it's just it's clinical. I mean, it was it was easy for Optic today. They, they, they made it look easy. Uh, you can kind of just see that Miami just, again, going through the motions. It, they collapse very, very easily. Uh, and even looking at the scoreboard, they're just having a hard time getting kills. So it is a three zero. Yeah, it was it was bad. It, it was really bad. I thought Optic looked great today. I mean, granted they are playing Miami, but I think them coming off uh, the online stage, being seven and zero, and then coming out and getting a three zero versus Miami, like we can't deny that they look good go going yeah, into the rest really of the weekend. They look out. really good. They, they, they do look good. Years, so and and NBA players showing up at LA Fitness also look good. Mm -hmm. Cody I mean, Mello. I'm, I mean, Again, I'm, I'm I think I think we'll get a good test tomorrow. I mean, if we or reference you mean, the you mean Saturday, right? Saturday. Or, yeah. Jesus, we got to wait a whole day. I don't know. I, I, um, I'm excited. Yeah, to Saturday we'll get, get a good test because um, their game went what round eleven, right? Or not round eleven? Game five when they played online. So uh, and, against, and, against Toronto, I'm, yeah. I'm just really yeah. And Toronto really took excited. both hard points. So I'm really excited be, for their matchup against one. Toronto because I think both Toronto and Optics still have map pool issues to figure out. Optic probably at least online. Pool. Online, they look like the much better team. Um, but this is Lan, and uh, this is going to be a banger, dude. I'm really excited to watch. They, this. they yeah. have map pool issues, but like uh, depending they on how they're like, the they thing. don't. They, yeah, they, they both don't exactly. Like high that's what I'm saying. S &D. Like, there's a couple of. Do you think a Rio S and D happens? Yeah. 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 Because First the, Toronto, either, either one of these teams is going to play terminal or high rise. Optic's I got, be I got rise. Toronto winning Rio S and D. I terminal. mean, Toronto, Toronto could try here's to the, fucking terminal. Here's square the thing, again. though. It's like, I like mean, terminal, Rio, terminal is going to get vetoed. Terminal is going to get vetoed by Toronto. It did get vetoed no, no, by no, them in the I don't think Toronto might not square up with them on Karachi again. Yeah. But yeah. They might veto Karachi. I don't know. But Toronto does not play terminal. They share map pool. Yeah. It's going to be a weird one. It will definitely be interesting. Uh, agreed. But any any other final thoughts on, on the series, guys? Any final no, thoughts? On Miami that? goes to play Carolina next. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Okay, phenomenal. Let's <laughs> move on. And then we got the last series That's of the day. Anymore. This series gave me a heart attack. It's I was banger, stressing bro. out. Banger. I was fucking stressing out watching this. Uh, we had a good little watch party today. We had Face Temper in there. Nate shot. Sam Larue. Octane was in there. We were in. We had a Face versus uh, Mud Dog was in there. Kason, it was it was Kason. owner versus owner it was owners violence. versus owners vibe in the in the watch party and man did we get a good series bro it was back and forth uh, it was it was a great one uh, scroll down take a look pretty balanced stat sheet as well I think both teams were just throwing down a lot of damage and uh, it was getting gruely for sure but Sam let's start with you I mean this is your squad um, you got the LA Thieves shirt on you already you also put the ring on Sam I don't think the ring helped today I put the I... ring on yeah I, I, the um, juju was gone out the of the juju ring. was gone you lost the juju but Sam talk to me I mean, what happened today with LA Thieves I actually thought they played great to be honest with they you played they played fucking fantastic they play good. today this yeah. series went way better than I expected to which I think is also not a great sign for Faye moving forward in the tournament but maps uh one two and three looked great until we choked a five three lead in the map two for a potential three oh in the series yeah. um 
Maps one and three were genuinely clinical. Like they they took care of business. They did exactly what they needed to do, um, and they beat phase and control, which is by far and away their best mode. So I was super impressed with that. The five three game two was a rough one to uh, to watch for sure. And oh yeah. Once it kind of hit game four, I wasn't really confident for them to beat phase on a real hard point. So yeah. Once we hit the game five, that's where I was like, eh, this could go either way. LAG just beat phase on it. Um. So I thought there was an opening there, but. They signed, they just kind of took care of business. To be I'm honest. gonna be brutally honest here. I still do not. I listen. I do not care that they had a competitive series because <clears throat> with phase, not shooting his gun, bro. with phase, they share a very similar map set. So they're getting a lot of the maps that these guys are well practiced at and have found success on. And it's kind of the same thing with like Vegas and Ultra. It's like they made improvements, but they still have a clear liability on their roster. And people will say like I'm hating, but no, bro. It's literally blatantly fucking obvious. You have a player on your team that's not shooting back. Afro is not playing well, and he's especially not going to play well against these top four teams. He does this thing in search. I've even said it. Whenever he's playing search, he tweaks. He his makes search. some. He make, but he does make some plays, and he does win them some rounds. But when it comes to the respawns, it's the same story every time. It's like you have Dan Ghosty doing his thing. Kremp has his his maps and stuff like that which he played phenomenal had today phenomenal he had a fucking series phenomenal yeah, series and then good. nasty contributes like he puts up damage but he's overall he doesn't get a lot of kills and then afro just is nowhere to be fucking found yeah so can i talk can i expand on what you said because i see morons in the effing fucking chat oh, Jesus Christ, Bro, man. to chris's point these teams have very overlapping map pools right and so you're going to get series like this where I don't we see people like phase troll vetoes. Phase picked team B, they picked Invasion Search they won, and Rio fucking hardpoint that they won. Mm. So I don't know what else you want them to do. Like they're not gonna play sub base. So obviously thieves, if they're comfortable, they're gonna pick invasion. Yeah, I don't they, know what else they just you guys, have overlapping map what, pools. What Both guy, teams play these maps. I don't know what else you guys want them to do, bro. Just Wait, Nate shot Nate shot you said was in the watch party, right? Yep, he yeah. was there. Yep. So he was watching Afro get world starred? He was watching the yes. whole series from start to finish, so, Pat. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see some changes. This, this, soon, te- this team's just bagging. like Vegas, bro. They just they have a clear upgrade path. Um, I don't really know um, what like lo- like what maybe they see in Afro that is potentially um, important to their game dynamic. But just from a gameplay perspective, to statistical perspective, like everything that you can think of besides their search and destroy gameplay, he's just live. Well, you, Chris, you said that Miami needs to drop the Spanish cheese, right? Yeah. Does LA Thieves need to drop the European cheese? <laughs> I mean, potentially. I think Nasty's not bad. Um, like I said, it's just one of those things where they have one clear upgrade they can make. And then maybe in the future, if Nasty is still not really helping them. But I think he's playing fine. Like, I think he's playing enough to contribute to the team and be on it. It's more like Afro's just not doing shit. Yeah. Like, I don't really concern myself with... Afro's KD, as long as it's not blatantly costing, like a 0.85 to like a 1.0 is is whatever. It's the damage. But bro, he has 5,000 less damage than anybody on his team. Like, yeah. that is... Even... even well, Draza, he, doesn't, he doesn't L trigger. Like, even Draza, <laughs> yeah. who like had... Like, even Draza, who had a very similar KD, still had, like, almost 18,000 damage. Like, yeah. he's shooting his gun, he's contributing, he's putting down shots, he's hitting nades, hitting stuns, whatever. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, and on the other side, with, with FaZe, I mean... Um, I, I think going into it, we all thought FaZe was going to make this look easy, and it didn't look like that at all. I think it got a little scary, especially Sam in the map number two, like you said. Like, this could have went LA Thieves' way. So, is it is it scary for FaZe, or are you, are you worried uh, that FaZe had this performance? I mean, Pat, we'll, we'll start with you on this. Are, are, are you worried for FaZe after the performance they showed today, or are you you're still feeling pretty confident with these guys? I know, I know Draza really struggled today. He had a rough series, but, um, you know, it happens. What do you think, Pat? Yeah, I'm not worried. Um, I, I I still think this team is is confidently top four. Um, I think oh, yeah, said like yeah, like oh, I, yeah. I, I just think this was a bad Agreed. series. Um, and the do you fact think that this was like a sorry to cut you off, but would you would do you think this is like a starting slow kind of thing? We're adjusting to the tournament. Or We've do you seen that before, like a, right? Like FaZe yeah, has some tournaments where they start poor. slow and then turn up. Um, yeah. I like to see that Simp was frying. Um, like that guy has been insane and continues to be insane. Yeah, um, agreed. And Draza, I mean, hopefully he just has one of those like he's laying in bed tonight. And he tweets out, "I'll show you who God is" or whatever, and then shows <laughs> up tomorrow. Uh, world go stars. Go nah, history after yeah. series was funny, yeah. but I mean, I mean to be fair, I mean, listen, Tyler had a tough first map. He then turned up in the map too. It's a case of like both BZ and Draza. I think finding big and pants in certain maps. Like Tyler turned up in that map too when they made the comeback. And then Draza got World Star in the control. He got World Star in the beginning of the Rio. 
And then on the, the first half of the first – the second half of the first rotation and the second rotation, I think he ended up positive on that map. So I think for FaZe, it's almost a little bit of hangover they had from the LAG series. And I think what the weird thing is with this format with all of these teams is like – it's not like old formats where you would you would have played tomorrow, right? You got to quickly regain, scrim, and figure it out. They get a day tomorrow to play like two or three scrims and work on whatever issues they have, game plan for New York, and get it going. So I think there's some vulnerabilities there. I think, you know, uh, a little bit iffy, but, um, you know, you just got to get past the winners round one against a team, by the way, you beat, and they're hungry to beat you. Have yeah. to beat them two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, if they we, play like this against New York, they will lose. One hundred, one hundred percent. I agree. They will lose that series. So I think. That, I, I think. Um, well, I don't know because if New York plays how they did against Boston game one, yeah, might just have a, a just shitter for shitter. But we go map by map, bro. The the yeah. the first invasion hard point. I don't know what phase is doing. I don't know who's not blocking or who's fucking up spawns. But like that's how that map got away from them in the middle of the first rotation, the second rotation, bro. They kept flipping themselves on P twos and P ones. Yep, I actually have P4s. an example of that. That's yeah, the first I clip I, I have. I don't really know what the thought process going on there is. Um, so here here's an example. I mean, this is this is one and it, this is where it started. I mean, this was the map number one. I mean, phase they were they were down pretty early. What's the quality? I let's up this a little. There's a reset in this series too because Dan Dan had PC issues all um, you can see series here I mean there's I'm just gonna let this play out so it starts with Abizi Abe is the one who's kind of going really rogue here um, which I'm not sure how you guys feel about the play, but then after, and maybe this is what they want. Like maybe this is what Phase they wants. Want, they just don't want to play P2 from. They don't want to right. They want to play P2 from from gas side and and spawn yeah. them Palace. But instead, it kind of gives LA Thieves the P2 rotation, and then they kind of they kind of lock down time here, and they stay pushed out, and Phase kind of gets blundered here. You, you um, know what's crazy? So like, ideally, yeah, you don't want to play from the Palace side, but I think I'm a very big proponent of a like. You, you want to take what you're given, and at that mm -hmm. point in time, you're essentially given a free rotation to P2. I think somebody was able to easily push up into, like, Broken or even get an early setup there. Yeah. Sure, have a Blurk, right, and, like, end up, like, pinching that late. Seven but everyone else, yeah, Seven. Seven should just basically should just hold chill. around Broken or P2 and basically anchor at least, like, a, like, a, like he should basically be a barrier for, for that rotation and then let his teammates kind of, like, play around that and cut off the players that are coming off of old P1. Yeah. But instead, they all kind of just go rogue. They give up a lot of map control. And, like, if they would have got the kills, it would have looked like they were geniuses, mm -hmm. right? But they they didn't. They they ended up walking in L-triggers and just dying. I just think they then, all push. I mean, right yeah. here, it, if a BZ's calming that he's pushing this out, and he, and he and especially with 30 seconds left, I, I, I would like to see just Sim just maybe, like, play a corner, you know, try and play a kill, like maybe lurk broken and, and just kind of hold. Um, he ends up getting a little rogue, and he gets caught out, and, and the spawns flip, and it was, this was just a mess. Honestly, the first hard point for Atlanta was was a little bit of a mess here. They're just skipping steps. Like, if like if I were them, like in my shoes, what I would have wanted them to do is, let's say, simp, maybe push a broken or hold that tank. Let Abizi do whatever he wants. He gets a kill and dies regardless, whatever. But hold from that hit from that fortress spawn if needed for the fir for like the first wave. And then once you get that first wave on P1, yeah. then push out and try to flip. But like they're just getting like they're just like getting overzealous right there, and they're just hoping that like the perfect scenario plays out. And well, Sam, what do you uh, think? Do you do you like Phase playing for gas there and kind of you know uh, kind of overplaying the gas spawns and because it almost looked like they wanted to flip them there. So like, what did you the think thing, there, Sam? I kind of agree with Chris. The thing about P2 spawn is you can you can hold from either side on the initial wave, but the palace spawn is the primary spawn. So whatever side that you win your your initial hold from, they're going to, unless you're hard blocking palace, most of the time they're going to end up spawning out regardless. So I think that Tyler kind of had the freedom or be easy to do whatever he wanted right there. Yeah. Um, but to Chris's point, I think if Simp had just had the the foresight to play broken or I don't know obviously what the comm sounded like, but mm -hmm. um, to kind of hard block palace to allow Tyler to run around, do whatever he needed to do and then force flip them after the first initial hit. Yeah. Um, that obviously would have probably played out a little bit better. And then we get into the round 11. This was the map number two. This is the map where phase was actually able to bring it back um, and to get the bomb down. Now I wanted to talk about this retake from LA thieves. I mean, first and foremost, I mean, phase were able to get, a, to get the bomb down without being contested. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about LA Thieves uh, kind of giving up this site. Did they give it up off the rip so of the round I or think, no? I think FaZe, clearly from the beginning of this map, had a game plan for how Nasty plays this site. Because I think they they were leaning B heavy and going fast. And I think they kind of knew that Nasty plays this very slow. And I don't mm -hmm. think Nasty ever adjusted or they ever really doubled up to try and counter what FaZe is doing on these offenses. Yeah, I, I like the strat call from FaZe because they end up just getting the bomb down and staying alive broken and stuff. I just didn't understand the retake from Thieves. So it's like, okay, they're on the bomb, right? You, you save your tax. I mean, 
They didn't really save their tax. They actually did throw out their tax. I think Nasty threw his tax. And uh, why did Kremp not? Kremp comes hit? all the way back to yeah, the dark to voluntarily triple I'm, hit it in a four v four. Because I remember we were watching this in a watch party, and, and Matt Nate shot. He was like, "Oh, it's a great pin. It's a great flank. Like this is this is perfect." And then he just turned around <laughs> and ran all I mean, the way this back. Is like, this is it like is shooting like, fish in a barrel. Like you have every, you have the whole map. You know, you know how much information you have. Where and they he's are. checking all the corners here too. I mean, I just wouldn't expect anybody. You you hear all the noise. I, I'm sure Dan and Nasty see all. They're getting all this info. I, they they know phases on this site. But he he shoots, which is why he starts like tweaking and running away. He takes he shoots at somebody on the street. But even then, like phase is forced to turtle in this setup now because Kremp took right. the pinch like he has blue he has tree house and, and him voluntarily giving also, that up also like, people are saying he got seen in chat it, okay it's irrelevant. it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. that doesn't means matter. that now irrelevant. somebody has to be dictated to watching that area of the map and like if they're pushed up with this much map control and you already keep cleared back blue the only place that a player can be right that you do not have information on is maybe tree house at that yeah. point you, you know you that that's blue, the only place. Take right the right. fucking one v one. Yeah. If you win yeah. it, you win your team the game. If you get there and there's no one there, well, you know they're all pinned on site and broken, and then that's an easy fuck. That's a way easier retake exactly. than yeah. all hitting through dark. Yeah. Yeah. Triple 100%. voluntarily triple hitting dark in a four v four is just fucking. Insane. I didn't like the triple dark either. I would rather them just kind of especially I, like no smoke. Yeah, like either rotate, uh, come back through CD and try and pinch broken where Kremp was. Like if they collapsed on the pinch, it would have been perfect. Yeah. Or if not, just just they, the right if, if you can get that guy off the tank, it's probably doable. But they literally were just walking over fucking crossfire with the BGS. Yeah, yeah so, having so. a guy on that Phase. tree, it just denies the tank yeah. completely. So they have to play forklift and cube. And then you you end up, um you probably, you skipped it, but like as the round plays out, did you guys not see Phase double stacking the forklift? Yeah, like, they the were the just, double stack forklift. Like they were just fucked. Like, like <laughs> they 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 uh, they were under the impression that they. They were gonna get like hard pinched. Yeah, they were probably just mind blown. No, the whole BZ's team's out dark. If you, BZ's literally sitting on a tank, looking at like some, he's looking at the palace hop. He's looking at ice cream. He's looking at the fucking uh, the the mid dark alley. And what he ends up doing is just lying next to the tank and letting the second guy run across and he kills him after MC got the first kill. Like, yeah, yeah. they they were probably just mind blown that they just sprinted through dark <laughs> and gave him the free. Are you gonna say the Pat? Yeah, Pat, you were gonna say I was gonna something? say guess guess who remains undefeated in round eleven. Oh, I'm guessing Phase. Are they undefeated? <laughs> Are they undefeated? undefeated? Four no. Four oh, no. Wow. Undefeated. It's good. It's a good stat to have. Um, and then this is where Phase collapsed. This is an example of uh, Phase uh, making a mistake, in, in my opinion. I mean, it was a good play from Thieves. They end up winning the offense here and they end up taking the control. It was all defensive wins. I thought we were going into an overtime. Uh, you can kind of see how everybody just falls from phase, and LA Thieves was able to work this collapse. I mean, if you're Atlanta phase, well, anything you would have done differently here, they they seemed super turtled here in laundry. And they fucking, were just fucked. Like, uh, they got, I would have asked Draza to spawn <laughs> in. A couple of our kids. Well, they did. Uh, yeah, Zach was having a tough match. <laughs> you mean, no, I, well, they did get they did get a they did get a first blood here with Selium off the re off like the respawn. So I kind of want to see like what the routes that Thieves took. Yeah, I I actually like the routes these. So they they went around like they 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 had somebody slow play front, somebody slow play uh, cafe, and then two guys went around. And you can see Gosi now like getting through. He's able to find one, put some shots down into the other, and it, it all collapsed. I mean, that's the best thing to do in my opinion. Like somebody slow play front, then play through mid, play through left, and 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 kind of like funnel them. And, and I mean, it just comes down to I think somebody on phase didn't watch the pinch, like the back like mannequin pinch, like towards mid map. At that point, like, they were just, like, trying so hard to deny the cross. I think it's number six. You'll see him, like, he's really trying hard to, like, stop his teammate from crossing. But yeah. I think with how turtled you are in the setup, like, you got you to trust your teammate, I feel like, to, on Hill, number five, to just yeah. win the fight. He also gets bad timing because I think two people are in, in mannequin here, and one of them is just kind of, like, staying down, and he ends up rotating over towards laundry. But the other guy, yeah. he kind of has mid-cross, so he's probably under the assumption that nobody can hit back blue. And I think somebody on Thieves, number one, just gets a really good timing and flanks them. So. Yeah, that was it was a good play. And then I just have a couple examples from the last S and D, the last map. I mean, th this is one of them. Just just Afro kind of going a little rogue and and over -channeling. I mean, it's a three v three situation, and you know you expect Afro to just kind of throw some shimmies here, keep his gun up. Three v three, Tom. And okay, so the he way he slides this, out like an animal. Sorry to cut you off. The way this round opens up, it's a four v four. They double chow bottom, uh, simp and Abizi. They get one, they get traded, and the bomb is down. So so phase back up and have to re hit this. And like all Afro, and they have to do is, and I assume they knew the bomb was down based on the fact that they killed Chris. Like 
just 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 play around the info, play around the trades, and instead, just absolute rogue plays going on here. Yeah, it was just too rogue. I mean, they're just over channeling. Like they, it, you you saw it firsthand, and it just started. You, you're right. They did try and push like uh, they did a little underground push here, and a simp hands up fun. I thought Kremp was gonna have two here for a second, but he finds one good trade from Abizi, and Abizi gets out. He almost gets traded here. But Afro doesn't finish the, the kill. I mean, I don't know if they knew Bomb was down, Ben. I don't for think this, they knew Bomb was down. Because it was moving so quickly, they didn't have an opportunity to check. But I just yeah, think Afro over there, it there, it, they just give the kill to him. He just gives it to him uh, and just makes it a lot easier for him. And then we go into uh, another round. This is the 1-1 one, one think only I think LAT is only one, two rounds from, from the whole uh, entire yeah, map. Yeah, because there's, there's a reset in the, in the second um, round of this. But, the, but then even right yeah. here, it's kind of like the same exact uh, situation where... Uh, look at MC underground, and you see the the same thing. They just kind of run at him. Uh, it starts with Kremp. He goes down, and then you have Afro underground, and he tries to push it. Look, Afro tries to push on the, on defense, and then he falls again, and then it's uh, this. Why whole... is it? Why is it so hard? And why why is it that so many times I watch teams play this map, they refuse to group? It's like okay, we're in a three v four. And, like, they just killed our player underground. Like, Afro, back the fuck up. Like, let's go, like, take – let's go try to take yeah, some space. Let's together. go, like, hit out Heli or something yeah. together. Like, let's maybe, like, team shot B Street. Like, they're just all sitting there with their pants down or making a solo play and just getting picked off one by one. Like, yeah. you got to group up and you got to retake some sort of space on the map. It's the only way to bail yourself out. And especially on this map, it's like you, you can afford later in the rounds to kind of give up that B Street, especially if, like – you're either up man or down man because you can take heli, isolate the player that's kind of watching that like pinch, and then you can just get a height advantage over yeah. the players that are towards B. Mm -hmm. Chris, it's actually interesting because I thought the last two times we watched FaZe play this map, I felt like that was their problem. Um, and I felt like in this map, especially once they got going in the middle, they were doing a good job grouping up and taking B Street control, taking yeah. bottom middle control. They were playing playing around to to cause chaos to let you know Tyler get in their spawn like I really like the adjustments from FaZe and, you know, like the issue in the first s and I don't think that Thieves really had a plan B in these searches. And I ended up, I think, being the big difference in this series. Yeah. yeah. I think they just had poor mid-game adjustment. Yeah. Like, we saw a pretty similar, which granted is kind of a default setup from FaZe on defense pretty much every round. And there was no, like, proactivity yeah. to, uh, to really do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow we got Heretics versus uh, Carolina. Vegas Legion versus Seattle Surge, Boston Breach versus Minnesota Rocker, and the Los Angeles Thieves against the Los Angeles Gorillas. These are all elimination matches. So if any of these teams lose, they will be eliminated from the tournament. Uh, I said we give some predictions. Uh, oh, real quick before we move on. Um, yeah. Simp also made history. I saw somebody in chat pointing oh, yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's Good the call. first player in the league to have back-to-back -back 100 bombs, I don't know if he 100 did. kills I, in a I series. I don't know if he actually did. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you have the stats? Yeah, 97. Yeah, 97. Yeah, I, I think they might have pre-popped Did they uh, pre-pop pre that? They, pre they pre-popped the stat. Oh, they pre-popped it. it. Oh, I think the stats are wrong. But that would have been, been fucking wrong. terrible, though. That would have been terrible. That would have been yeah. GG, boys. But I, mean, it, I feel like it also matters, too, when you go to a last map, you go to map five. Like, that shit yeah. matters, too. You get more kills. Chris, like. where did you get that from? Bro, they put it up on the stream. It was on the stream. It was on the stream, so I kind of just remembered it. I didn't even look at the actual stats. Why the fuck did they pre-pop it? I don't know. They were trolling. Wait, they actually did have some interesting stuff on the broadcast. Did you guys see the controller cam they showed on the yeah that was yeah. weird that, that was, was weird. Yeah. I mean, those skin controller skin cams are fucking terrible you can't even read you can't even see what they're doing it's a sponsor deliverable bro you gotta make sponsors happy man it. It, was, it, was it was a good sponsor there. integration it yeah. was completely yeah. pointless information though they gotta yeah. they gotta make the, the first thing i, I think what they gotta do is i think that the 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 controller image is too flat like they need to add better texture to it so it kind of stands out and it's a little bit better to look out. I like the idea with a couple of tweaks. I think it could be pretty good. But did they spectate point. Kenny when they did it? They were on Snoopy when they did it. The there would be a lot of wild. They had Austin. Austin was doing a lot of YYs, actually. But uh, uh, what are you guys thinking of this bracket? Losers bracket right now. Obviously, I think this is what we want. We predicted. Any matchups you guys are excited for here? Um, I am excited I think to Breach see. Breach Rocker could be good. Yeah, I think Breach Rocker would be good. I'm also excited to see what Carolina does tomorrow against Miami. Yeah. Like, I'm expecting Carolina to come out and take care of Miami, and, and maybe they can catch some fire and, and make a run. I mean, I always love watching Clay. He brings a lot of passion. So. Uh, that'll be a good one, and I think uh, Vegas. I think Vegas should comfortably win against Seattle tomorrow. Um, we'll, we'll see what kind of Seattle we get tomorrow. But if you're Vegas, I think today was a good showing. They just fell yeah. a little short to to Toronto. Um, not a little. My short, bracket's but, perfect you know. right now. I know that. And uh, I hope just every just for person in this call <laughs> and chat has bracket. a perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and for reference, so because you guys are curious, which is the fifth matches. So the bottom two matches. Boston Rockers first and Thieves LAG. So they're going to play their loser round two match between over Wednesday for top six tomorrow. 
And then the two teams at the top will play that uh, first thing on Saturday. Okay. Well, let's do uh, some predictions. I got my uh, – for the first one, I'm going to go Carolina Royal Ravens 3-1 over to Miami Heretics. Ben, who do you got? Oh, bro. I have Carolina 3-2. I, I hope and pray they show up tomorrow. Chris, who do you have? <sighs> Carolina, just because I really want Heretics to blow it up. And at least Carolina have, uh, you know, Gwen on their team. Yeah. They got somebody on there that's – uh, guys. Pretty good. Uh, Sam, who do you have? I have Carolina as well. I think Miami has has shown me enough in their three series that I've seen. Yeah. Pat? I think Carolina is going to win, but I kind of hope they don't because I've seen this before where teams, you know, they might win this one, they might win the next one, and they get a little confidence and they don't make roster changes that are desperately needed. Mm. Uh, so I hope Carolina lose to make a roster change, but I think they'll win. I think Carolina, even if they win, they would probably play, I'm assuming, Legion here. I'm sure most of us are probably going to go Legion. And even if they go out after that round, like, there's no way they don't make a roster change again. Yeah. And then we You'd have uh, uh, then we have the Vegas Legion going up against Seattle Surge. I want to go Vegas 3-0. <laughs> Vegas 3-0. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, ben? I will give Seattle one map, but the respawns are going to be not close to this one. Vegas Chris, 3-0. Vegas 3-0. Sam? Same. Pat? Same. And we got the Boston Breach going Whoa. up against the Minnesota Rocker. I'm going to go Boston in this one. I'm going to go Boston 3-2. I can actually see this being a good series. I can see this being a grueler, but definitely think this is a this is an opportunity for Boston to come out, get a big dub. I know uh, Minnesota, they had a rough stage, too, um, online. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But I'm going to go with Boston here. I just think they have the edge right now. I'm going to go 3-2 Boston. Ben, who do you got? This is like a true pickup series, I think. I mean, I'm... Right now, I'm more confident in Boston winning S and Ds than I am a Rocker. So I go with Tom and Boston three two. Another heartbreaker game five for Rocker. How many they've had this split? Yeah, <laughs> Chris, who do you I got? got Boston, but I think this is a coin flip series. I want Boston to win because I really hope that Minnesota finally pulls the trigger on their roster change. Because I think that these guys, with the way that they did play in the first stage and even at the beginning of stage two, like they have good pieces on their team. If Lamar keeps playing the way he is, I think Vivid's been okay. Um, Linz has been great, but Wake has just been, again, like every team just has a liability. And I feel like there's a clear upgrade path here, and there's actually a lot of ARs and challengers. You know, naming maybe one of them, Dylan Rex on uh, Phase Black Academy, who uh, can probably play the same role that Wake does, right? You expect him yeah. to be very He's kill good. heavy, good. and he puts up a lot of kills. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Sam, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to take Rocker, I think. Okay. Um I think they'll I think they'll show up a little bit better than they did online. Um, and to be honest, it is pretty much a coin flip series. But I have a good feeling about Rocker tomorrow. Okay, and Pat, who do you got? But before I give you my prediction, I just want to—I'm not lagging on your guys in it, am nope. I? No, nope, you're good. Oh, We're smooth. okay. Because because I just ran a speed test and one thousand down, one thousand up, one ping. This Xfinity internet, Tom, is something Ooh, serious. Yeah, Slay, you looking serious. smooth. Slay, you looking smooth I'm over serious. there. You know what I mean? That's good work. It's a good little shot. But I got, there. I got rocker though. I got rocker in this one. <clears throat> you got rocker, Minnesota rocker. Okay. Yeah. So two uh, rocker for Sam and uh, Pat, and then the rest of us got breach. And then let's go to the last one of the day. We got the Los Angeles Thieves going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas. I thought these looked good today. I mean, granted, LAG did uh, get the double refaze online. I, I don't know. I just have a good feeling with LA Thieves. I think they're going to come out uh, and bounce back after their loss today and, and make something happen. So I'll go LA Thieves 3-1. Ben, who do you got? You know, I'm going to say LA Thieves 3-2. I think we, we get LA Thieves swing the other way to Gritty 1, but they close out against LAG. Okay, Chris. Listen, LAG backs against the wall. Nah, they got a lot of pressure shocker. on their shoulders to show up here. <laughs> Obviously, they had a dog shit online stage, but you know, they came out with one win against FaZe, and uh, they're going to ride that confidence. I got LAG! <laughs> you, bro, you might you might be like reverse cursing them, bro. Like they win when you, when you don't uh, I'm just kidding. Them. I got God. Thieves. Ah, oh, shit. Get the, <laughs> get the merch and model oh, the merch. I'm about to I got Thieves. I got Thieves. I got Thieves. Uh, Pat. Pat. Sam. Thieves. Thieves. Pat, I got Thieves as well. Thieves has a franchise record of eight and one after dropping to the losers bracket. Uh, so they Yo. typically bounce back. So Do you guys have uh, Thieves winning then the other matchup they're going to play tomorrow, like getting top six and being either Boston or Minnesota? Yes, I have them losing to whoever drops from. I think it's like that like on Saturday. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's mine. I I just think see Thieves versus either Boston or Rocker. Uh, I, I think I think the, I think they've I mean, got the better map pools, and again, S and Ds. I just feel way more confident in these in search, but 
Yep. They got they got to switch up that invasion hole, bro. Like they they got to do better min map adjustments and searches because could come to bite them later on. Yeah, guys, uh, that's gonna do it for all the series today. We obviously got more series tomorrow. Ben doesn't have a putter, I don't think. So I don't. I'll think bring the putter tomorrow. Do we, do we want to talk hotel. about what uh, what Chris leaked earlier? No. Uh, okay. What? It, oh, about the major four. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, cute. apparently Carolina's not hosting Major 4. I mean, that's the rumor right now. They're major good. 4, no fans. We lost. It's over. Yeah, GGs. apparently there's no fans or something. Or um, Yeah, and Carolina's not hosting. I don't know. Uh, well, hopefully we'll get more information on, on that soon. But, um, guys, we got new merchandise uh, coming to you soon. I got my man Gersh over here who's uh, who's going to show you some of this stuff. I mean, you can even give me something, Gersh, too. if you want. Um, but we got the – here, I'll actually pull it up. Hey, let's go over here so I can show you guys. First and foremost, let's get closer here. But, guys, we got the Flink logo on the front. Are you done? Okay, and then on the back, we got the Flink. It's got a big mic. It says Fugaze on one side. It says We Are Live on the other. And then on the bottom, it says uh, they scream uh, your failures and whisper your success. So this is one T-shirt. We also got a beanie, Chris. Show the beanie. We got a Flink beanie. Duarte's wearing that. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh-huh. We also got a white T-shirt here. Okay, flank logo, simple design, flank logo on the front, the flank on the back, how you doing, that's what I'm talking about, and of course, we got an all gray sweatsuit, Ben, doing a phenomenal job modeling that gray sweatshirt, I mean, he looks fucking great, he looks fucking phenomenal, give it up, we got a full set, uh, we got the hoodie and, and the sweatpants. <laughs> Yeah, Chris got the sweatpants on. He's got it all on. He's got it all going. But, guys. Put them on, Chris. Put them on. Just want yeah, you guys right to now. know. He's wearing them right now. Um, oh, he's wearing them? Yeah. He's wearing them. Yeah, he's wearing them. I just want you guys to know, chat, this drop is going to be limited in past drops. You guys would buy stuff, and then a month would go by, and it would take so long to send the orders in, get them processed, and then send them back and do the samples, and yada, yada. It'd take you guys a month and a half, two months to get your merch. We have all the merch in-house now, so we actually ordered it first. That way, when you guys buy it and purchase it, it gets shipped directly to you, and you should get it within the week. Um, so, obviously, it's very high-quality stuff. We, we definitely went on the pricier side. We wanted more, qual uh, like, higher quality. I mean, you guys can attest the quality is really nice. Um, you, I, pr I promise you guys, uh, I, I didn't want to get you guys T-shirts that scratch your nipples. You know what I'm saying? With the fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I hope you guys really like enjoy that, it. Huh? Zuma.gg. We're going to be releasing this stuff uh, on, I'm, I want to do it noon uh, Eastern. So 12 p.m. Eastern on Saturday is when we're looking to drop this stuff. So limited items, get it while you can. If it does sell out, maybe we'll throw up some pre-orders. But if you guys want something, it's limited. So make sure you guys are ready for the drop. Uh, and also, huge shout out again to Xfinity. Uh, we wouldn't be here without them. Fast, reliable, some of the best internet you can get. So make sure to show some love to Xfinity because we wouldn't be here without them. So huge shout out to, to them uh, and huge shout out to, to everybody uh, on the show, man. Huge shout out to Pat, Sam, Chris, Ben. Huge shout out to everybody in the chat, everybody behind the scenes. Pepsi, Zach, FaZe Clan, Gersh running socials. I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure being here. Shout out to Jaden. He's the one who made these, these awesome graphics. Uh, it's just an absolute pleasure to be here. So just thank you guys so much. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sites that we're on. Go follow at the flank on Twitter. Gersh doing a phenomenal job running socials. And of course, zuma.gg. Go sign up. Go put your email in over there. And uh, and we'll get it going, ladies and gentlemen, and do what we got to do. All right? So, zuma.gg. It's an absolute pleasure. We'll see you guys uh, tomorrow in the watch party in the show. Uh, and we'll see you guys later, man. Take care. Brush your hair. Take it easy, and we'll see you guys tomorrow on another episode of The Flank. Goodbye. Peace.